Hey everybody, it's Tyler here at the Highlander Summit Signature Event, checking in with 2616H Hydra, and we're going to be giving you a really great overview of what this robot has to bring. They had a great first match as we're filming this as well too, so we can't wait to see their continual performance as they go through. This is their first event, but a lot of great things to go through. You'll get that full systems overview. The robot also rocking a great doinker as well too, so talk more about that, as well as some of the uh, systems they're using, some of the programming as well too. Maybe talk about some of the areas of opportunity and what they're trying to work on throughout the Signature Event, and also later on as well too. So sort more about Hydra coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Thrill Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. All right, so let's kind of go a full bottom up uh, systems overview on this. Start out with your drive base, and there's a lot of great other attributes we're going to be covering on this, so talk me more about it. Yes, yeah, sure, 100%. So if you tilt it, you can tilt it up. Okay, so pretty much we have a six motor drive, pretty standard, and we're running 450 on 3.25 inch wheels. We have these uh, one traction wheel right here and one traction wheel on the bottom, so that really helps kind of um, just anti defense and stop us from getting pushed around while we're trying to score. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it about the drivetrain. And then if you look over here, we have our first stage of the intake. So this, we have some nice polycarb here and it's all made out of flex wheels and we're running the high strength axle across. This is running at 600. So we have, um, here you can. So pretty much it goes into the first stage and then it will kind of just sit in this, don't run it yet. Sorry. It will kind of just sit in this little reservoir right here until we pick it up with this. And then it can pick it up like that. And then we have um, some hooks right here. So the hooks, we this is actually about like the fourth iteration of the hooks that we tried. And we found this one to work the best. So if we have the mobile goal mech right here, so I'll show you that really quick. So in its down, in its up position, so it can actually pick it up from the side, so from the flat edge and the corner. It works a little better on the flat side, but we made sure that we added these rubber stoppers here. This helps auto align it when it's on the side. So even if we pick it up from like somewhere like there or here, then it will always go on. Um, and this rubber stopper here is pretty important. So this actually is what is responsible for tilting the mobile goal. So if you click it. So one of the things I got to ask you uh, earlier, we were talking about a strategically placed license plate. So I'd love <laughs> to hear more about uh, the, the placement of it. What competitive advantage are you getting out of it? And uh, is it something that is truly viable? So we think that it's extremely viable. So if we're on the red team here, we have our red license plate. Um, so this will go in the intake, don't run the intake, but it makes it so if this polycarb here also helps that, but sometimes at um, in, during scrimmages, we had some issues where it would come out like this, and this license plate, it cannot do that whatsoever with these zip ties, and it'll go back right into its position. So really, do you give the credit to the zip ties or credit to the license plate, or is it a combination that makes it A work? combination of both, probably. All right, that's fair. So yeah. how, how about the uh, doinker system? Talk to me more about how sure. you're utilizing that. So the doinker is powered by one, um, one medium-sized piston, and we have a few rubber bands on it for um, active extension and passive retraction. So um, when it goes out, so this right here, so it can um, pick up, or sorry, it the rings, here, put it down, or put it up. So it goes um, in, and then we can grab it like that and then drive backwards a little. And so we can, grab the wings and the rings and pull them with us. And then pretty much we have the it, the same concept applies with the mobile goal. So if it's right like here about yeah. It could it's sometimes it's a little finicky. It takes a second to line up, but it's just with practice. So activate it. And then you drive backwards a little and you can pull it. I want to talk to you a little bit about match strategy. So your team is really obviously focused on mobile goals and less on wall stakes as well too. Can you talk to me a little bit more on the decision for that? Do you maybe see that maybe changing over time as well too? Yeah, for sure. So um, we try to play a strategy with the mobile goals. So we 
prioritize getting three mobile goals over having two mobile goals and one um, and control of a wall stake. We think that the most um, the key point of the game is controlling the third mobile goal. So um, with the wall stakes, though, we actually this is the second iteration of our bot. So the first um, version, we had a four bar lift and the intake would be mounted on the four bar and it would lift it and it would score on the wall stake. But we found it to be a little ineffective and kind of clunky. It was heavier. Um, it weighed about like 15. So this right here is 13, which we prioritize because it has, um, it makes driving a lot easier and we can be faster on the field. But, um, so the mobile goals, we try to fill as many as possible, usually trying to guard at least one corner, and if we can, we try to get the second one. Ron, let's talk about some uh, programming on your robot here and what's gone to that. Uh, a couple things I want to ask you is that your team has gone through some things, some things have worked well for you, some things have uh, maybe been an area of improvement for you as well too. Talk to me more about uh, some of that process and how you're going through your continual improvement process too. Um, so yeah, so where should I start? So I think with the color sorter, I think that's a very big thing. So with the color sorter, um, we can detect any range of colors, right? And so it detects it here and it'll sense when the ring gets up here. Say we're on red team and we have a, we have a blue ring. It'll, the intake will stop. And the intake will stop up about here. And since this ring, it'll completely come to a stop. And this ring, since the inertia, the inertia of the ring will cause it to just completely f fly off. From an autonomous strategy, what is your team implementing for auto right now the SIG, and then where do you maybe want to get to as well? So when we had Odon pods and all the odometry working, what we did, so we would we would take uh, grab the mogul directly in front of us, score the preload, uh, turn, and then just uh, grab all the mogul or not mogul uh, rings in the vicinity of us, and then we would get AWP. So that was our um, main strategy for um, autonomous. But you know, as Bryce said earlier, uh, the Odon pods it got misaligned and they broke, so we had to take them off yesterday. Watching at this signature event, obviously a lot of great competitors out here. What overall excites you the most about being here at the Highland Highlander signature event? Um, you know, just seeing all the teams, you know, all these diverse spots, and you know, getting inspiration and talking to all these different teams on how their um, strategy was and how they implemented their design versus us, and you know. Yeah, I think that's really the main thing. Well, Hydra, we wish you best of luck here at this event. So thanks for telling us more about your robot as well, too. Obviously, uh, first match, we have a big win for yeah. that. So can't wait to see if that continues well. We wish you best of luck with that. And can't wait to see how you do. Thanks for taking the time. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. First Updates Now has become the Fun Robotics Network. Check us out at funroboticsnetwork.com and all the social links that you see above here. And check out some of our new merchandise options that are both fun and robotics related as well too, both on our website and right underneath this YouTube video.